This is Forge Daily with Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. Forge fans, welcome back to another week of the Forge Audio Network. I am your host, Mackenzie Barwell, here to give you all things Forge FC. I'm so excited about today's episode because I got the chance to sit down with one soccer CBC legend, Andy Petrillo. She and I talked about what's going down this week ahead of the CPL final, what to expect from the championship match itself, and then why Forge is headed to their fifth straight final in five years. So before we get into it, some context quickly. Pacific FC lost to Cavalry 2-1 this past weekend, which means, of course, Cavalry headed down to Tim Hortons Field to face Forge FC for the CPL final on Saturday. It was a highly contested match, but ultimately, Cavalry clutching up to win their first ever knockout game in the CPL playoffs. So just know that, listening to Andy and I's conversation. She and Jordan Wilson have a podcast called One Nation. We actually talk about it briefly at the beginning, but I would highly recommend listening for more CPL content. And yeah, a huge thank you to Andy for making the time, and I hope you all enjoy our conversation. All right, we're rolling. Andy Petrillo, thank you so, so much for coming on to Forge Daily. I'm so thrilled to have you. Ah, my first time. I'm excited. I know. Like, Jordan's already been on. I felt like it was only right to have you as well. This conversation's long overdue, so. (laughs) Uh, Jordan's sneaking in before me. That's okay. That's okay. I can follow up with him. Don't worry. I know. I know. I was actually like, oh, do I even lead with that? Maybe. Maybe not. (laughs) But I'm, uh, I'm glad that you're here. And I wanted to start by asking what that's been like doing the One Nation podcast with Jordan, because I've already told you I'm an avid listener, and I think, you know, I can appreciate the the dynamic that you guys have. Well, that's just it. It's a natural dynamic, and I think that's why it's been so much fun. And I always get a little nervous. I'll, I'll, I'll say it straight out. I always get a little nervous when a player has just retired and wants to get into broadcasting because often, <laughs> yeah. um, oftentimes it's, it's difficult. That transition is difficult for players because broadcasting is intimidating. Like it's one thing mm-hmm. they've been an athlete and they've had all these eyes on them and they've dealt with pressure their entire life. It is completely different when you're in a studio and it kind of goes quiet and there's this camera with a red light that goes on and suddenly they stop talking. Suddenly they don't know how to formulate sentences. Suddenly they start yeah. sweating profusely. Right. And it's like, oh, okay. So oh. a little hesitation. Yeah, for sure. But that I have to say for Jordan, um, he's a fast learner and yeah. just a genuine, uh, personable guy. So I think that's why we were able to hit it off right away because he knows his stuff. He can give the information, which is obviously why we also love uh, former players because they just provide this different perspective, which he, right. he still knows how to have fun. We have an absolute blast doing that show together. Yeah, I think I've seen that too um, with Kyle. Kyle Becker has his own podcast now on the Forge Audio Network. and. <laughs> immediately I was like oh my gosh I wonder how this is gonna go like obviously he's such a face for the team he's such a presence he's such a personality but then right when I sat down with him I think it was one of the first episodes we did together I was like okay I can see the wheels turning in Kyle's head and then I just did another episode with him like last week and I was like how do you get the hang of it so fast yeah so yeah 100 percent. I know what you're saying Um, What I also do have respect for, though, and what I appreciate, you know, not only the knowledge that I get from you guys, but knowing that it's okay to go on a tangent every once in a while, because because I've started doing that with Bobby. And let me tell you, it's it's easy to, you know, do that. And then for you guys to come back on track, too, and remind me that, you know, yeah, it's okay. It is okay. And I learned that why people love radio, why people love podcasts is because it does show your personality. And it allows people to get to know you. And it's so funny because I would have like this incredible rant. You know, the, the radio show I did at the time was Leafs Lunch. So it was all hockey. And I would do this incredible rant. <laughs> I, break, I, I would break down this incredible play. that Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goal, blah, blah, blah. Then I would have a conversation about Smarties and how I have to separate my Smarties. I have to dump them out of the box. I have to color coordinate them. And then I eat them based on the color, like what I feel like eating. We posted both of the <laughs> on social media and it yeah. was the smarties one that blew up that had the most i'm unsurprised i don't yeah what the so you, yeah you start to learn when you do these types of things that of course people want the information they want analysis mm-hmm. right? they kind of want that hardcore but they also appreciate the tangent because the tangent show <laughs> actually having a conversation as exactly a, so you're not speaking at people you're speaking with them 
Yeah, I, it totally humanizes it, too. And I think that's what I've learned in talking to Coach Bobby, too, over this season is that, like, he will respond when I, like, ask him funny questions like, hey, what Forge players do you see playing for the Hamilton Tiger Cats? And then all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, shoot, he's not actually, like, this hard-headed, like, serious guy all the time. So, yeah, yeah that's why coming into this – yeah, he's funny, right? It is funny. He needs to let that. He's. I think he is starting to let it out a little bit more, but he's got yes humor for sure. You you know too, right? Exactly. But anyways, that's why I came into this interview kind of more at ease. I was like, okay, we could talk about Smarties. We could talk about fruit. <laughs> yeah. Fig. Yeah. You need to have yourself a fig, girl. All right. Well, let's let's move on here. Let's get into it, Andy. First things first. I want to talk about that um, Calvary uh, Pacific matchup because the last time I checked in with the audio network, it was prior to that game. So, what are your overall thoughts? Is this something that you were expecting to see? Because both teams were coming in with something. Obviously, Pacific some momentum in their first two matches in playoffs. They win, and then of course Calvary with the regular season that they had. So. What were you expecting? Were you surprised? No, you know what? I didn't know what to expect because, I mean, that's the beauty of, of playoffs as well. You can make the argument Cavalry is the better team. Of course they are. They were the, they're the regular season champions. So they, they've proven themselves over a longer period of time, without a doubt. You know, Pacific, uh, unfortunately, fell off near the end, which is why they found themselves in that playoff, that wild card game, let's say, right, between fourth and fifth New York. But then, oftentimes... It's how you're playing in tournament style football that matters. And Pacific was looking great. They defeated York. They flew cross country. They took care of business against Halifax, you know, and they were tight games. They were one goal games and they were winning them and they were showing the composure. And then they had to fly back and, and take on Cavalry, who, by the way, you, I did wonder if they got in between their own ears a little bit too much because they lost to Forge. They were in the, right. that semifinal playoff game, as we know, the winner going straight to the final, and they lost. They could not exercise that demon against Forge. So I didn't know what to expect because you can make arguments for both sides. And even when Cavalry went up 2-0, I'm like, okay, they're looking composed, which they did, and they looked really good throughout the game. And then all it took was that one goal by Pacific. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. time to go that I went, uh-oh. But yeah. uh, Cavalry, again, showed why they are the regular season champion. So they got the... They got the job done. And you could tell, like, even afterwards, I mean, James Merriman, when he was interviewed, obviously noticeably upset, but he was noticeably upset, too, because there was that real belief within the Pacific squad that they got the job done, that they, too, could go back to the final and face forward. They fully, 100% believed in themselves because of their recent play uh, in the playoffs. So it was crushing. It was, you know, it was devastating for them. But, of course, we're getting the rematch of rematches now with Calvary and Ford, so I'm pretty stoked for this. I know I know me too and you're right like Pacific were on that run of form especially like it was especially impressive because of the amount of travel that they were doing like barely any game or sorry any days in between to like kind of rest to recover and then they're all of a sudden training in pitches that they're not normally training at but yeah this Cavalry team comes out and honestly dominates this match more so than maybe what a 2-1 score might suggest so what do you think made cavalry can you point out some things in particular that you think made cavalry so successful because this was their first win in a playoff knockout game uh and they kind of did so in flying colors which is yeah you know impressive to see that, and weird weird to think right well it, it just blows my mind because again and i've always said this right the exercising of the playoff demons but i never realized how they didn't win like you kind of knew but you kind of didn't and then when it was yeah oh that's right. That is their first playoff game. That isn't that weird. Taking yeah, the island. You know, not looking at the island games and everything, right? Because I'm like, this is a team, as we know, in that first year, dominated. Right? They won the spring. They won the the fall. I always forget. You know, the two names of those two separate seasons. Yeah. Right? You, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Confusing. Way, fair. On both, they won the yeah. They won the closing, and then of course lost to Forge when it was still like the home and away games. So you're looking at them going, wow, but they dominated uh, again. First CPL team to defeat an MLS side in Canadian championship play. So like history, check, right? Like there's things like that where they've accomplished so much and then you go, oh, but that's right. They, we all know they haven't won a league title yet, right? And then also, wow, the playoff game, holy geez. But to me- Yeah, I saw your facial reaction. I was like, oh, I got her there. She forgot about that yeah. one. I mean, it just, it blew my mind because- Yeah, totally. When you think of perennial contenders in the CPL, it's two teams that always come to mind. It's Forge, it's Cavalry. It's Forge, it's Cavalry. Like, those are your perennial contenders. 
Um, yes, you've had Pacific, obviously, who's the only other uh, winner in this league. Then in that bubble, like in that Island Games, you had Halifax who made it to the final. And sure, you had Atletico Ottawa win the regular season title last year. You know, of course, you know they make it to the final, but it's always Forge and then Cavalry is always there. So I think what, you know, what's impressed me, though, about Cavalry, again, is like this has been a consistent team. Uh, this is a team where, you know, you have to give credit to Tommy Wielden Jr., even though, it, I mean, what did they start off with? Like six draws? It was like incredible. How Slower start, absolutely. Yeah. Start, it was like they were never going to win a game. I interviewed Tommy. He even said it. He's like, when you're in it, you think you're never going to win a game. But they did. And I think this is a team where you've seen them gel. And in that game against Pacific, I also feel a lot of times in playoffs, as much as, much as it's team play and as much as it's like come together as a unit, uh, make sure you stick to your, your you know, game plan. You still need moments and you still need stars. And Ali Moosey was that star. So you have to give him credit as well for that. For me, at least, I look at that semifinal and I just say, wow. Like this was yeah. a moment for somebody to step up and that's what he did. And he's the reason why, right? So now you just, you need those moments. And, and oftentimes that's what we talk about in these playoff games in a final. Who's going to stand on their head? Um, again, you always want it to be the 11 on the field, and they always say, we need the 12th man, right? Like, it's all great and fine and dandy, but oftentimes there's a hero. And I think that's what that's what also helped Cavalry in particular in that game, too, was they had a hero, and they had Ali Moussi. Yeah, I mean, that was going to be my next question, too, as to if you're Forge, who are you keeping an eye out for? But it's it's going to be the Ali Moussi's, the Dan Klomps, because, like, even looking at those two goals, both off perfectly executed set pieces yeah. and you're right these these are individual moments individual players who go to their way to make something happen and I did listen to that interview actually with um Tommy and I can see exactly what you're saying in that like it's a team effort and it's interesting what he had to say too about knockout football and how it changes the way that a team approaches a game and Mm. Anyway, see, this is me doing the tangent thing again, but let's talk about consistency <laughs> because, as you said, perennial contenders, Forge, Cavalry, this is the fifth straight final that Forge are going to be in, and, you know, from an analyst perspective, you've seen this team time and time again put themselves in this position, so what can you point out? What are those consistent factors that have contributed to their success over the span of five years? Wow. I mean, you've got to give the gaffer credit in that one. I mean, Bobby Smyrniotis, this is, you know, somebody who always, and I, I won't fault him for this, although sometimes I will because whatever, that's just my job as media is sometimes like, hey, yeah. <laughs> but in, and he's admitted it, right? Like in the past yeah. for the regular season title, right, meant something, which is, you know, you obviously get a trophy, there is some sort of financial benefit, but more importantly, you get a berth into CONCACAF Champions Cup. So in the past, um, Bobby's always admitted that they've done enough. Now, mind you, they've done enough. They've always still either finished first or second. Like, they've always been at the top, but they've done enough to get into the playoffs. And then it's like they find this other gear. It's almost like he's been, you know, hiding some tactics and hiding things, right? And then it all kind of comes out. Uh, it, yeah, playoffs come around and everyone's like, what? Exactly. And they get the job done because he's always he's he's always thinking, if this doesn't work, I shift to that. If that doesn't work, I shift to this. So he always has this game plan in his head that you may not necessarily see in the regular season because he hasn't had to deploy it. And then suddenly, you know, he just kind of will pull any kind of rabbit out of the hat during the playoffs. I, I kind of today I actually did a show and I like and forge, especially this year. Given that it was it was an okay year, which again blows my mind that they never really found momentum and they still managed to finish second. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I like Forge to like the jack in the box. You just yeah. you're, you're turning, you're turning, you're turning, and you don't know when it's going to jump out at you and just scare the crap out. Of you because that's Forge. They have this uncanny ability to sometimes just kind of coast on the surface and then boom, you know, uh, they, they can attack. So. With Forge, I just I think you have to give a lot of credit to Bobby and the staff. And then of course you do have your veterans on that team. Tristan Henry, the reason why this team was able to finish second, put on his head, you know, this Kyle Becker's always been that maestro in the middle. So, you know, you have to give that credit to certain players who are stalwarts. But uh I just think, you know, Bobby at the end of the day just kind of has all these tricks up his sleeve. And that's what makes him such mm -hmm. an incredible coach. This is the reason why we talk about him being interviewed. I mean, I know he interviewed for the Toronto job, but this is why we talk about him possibly going to MLS, because why would he not? Uh, Absolutely, yeah. We say, 
that it's it's not crazy if Canada Soccer were to interview him. In fact, I think it would be crazy if they didn't. They didn't, yeah. So, <laughs> well, you saw that in his response to at that one press conference when he was asked whether or not he'd be interested in a in a Canada Soccer job. He was like, "If you're asking me if I would like to coach players." at that level for our country and likely players that are coming from the CPL, then yes. Oh, and players that also came from Sigma. So like he knows. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, he also knows some, like a lot of these. Players. Totally. Yeah. But that's my point is like, you know, when you talk about forge, um, you can't say forge without Bobby and it's also going to blow my mind where I, I don't know if he's going to win coach of the year this year either. Girl, I don't listen. I don't know. And I tried, listen, I, okay. I have a show with him once a week and I of course wanted to bring this up, but at the same time it pained me because I was, I was thinking the same thing. This is your fifth nomination, but what are the odds that it will, you know, mm. be you because, because of the season that Halifax had after 2022 last season yeah. and because of what Tommy did with Calvary. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of grabbing my hair in the same way that you are right now. I won't, yeah. You know what it is? I don't know. We've dissected this in sports for many years. Everyone loves, it's a dramatic story. And I think if you look at year one, for sure, Tommy deserved it. Like I said before, Cavalry dominated year one, with the exception of, you know, just they didn't win the title. Forge did. Year two, Island Games. Everyone loved the fact that Halifax, Stephen Hart, it was the last to first, right? It was the fact that they were dead last and here they were in the final. Everyone right. loves that complete turnaround. Then in year three, it's kind of the same where, see, in year three, even though Forge was consistent, the problem is, is now you start to just take for granted consistency. Yes, so, and that's where we are now, right? Exactly. So Pacific ends up making the final. They win. Of course, Pamadou Cop. And then even last year, it's another one of those worst to firsts, right? With mm -hmm. So, of course, it's going to be. And that is a very interesting point. Yes. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I hadn't even considered kind of looking at the history of what this award and the coach who's awarded it, but you're right. Like, let's not forget about, how about consistency over five years? Okay. How many more years do we need to give you? That's the pro and that's, and, and it happens in every sport across the board. I've had this conversation when talking about the NHL as well. Like when you are consistent, when you are always there, you just inevitably get taken for granted. Right? It's like, Bobby's there, Bobby's doing the thing, it's all great. Like, there's no flash and, look, my dogs are even upset about it. <laughs> no like, flash. He's just consistent. And that's why I said people yeah. love the story. They love the worst to first. They love the turning something around, which is, like, I never want to take anything away from any of the coaches who have won. Right? Absolutely. I think it was all yeah. yeah. But now we're kind of getting into this trend where it's like, how long can we go? Right? Like, now it's kind of become a bit of a running joke. He's always there and you take that for granted. Well, that's why he comes up in the conversations when I ask you, what are the factors that, you know, have made Ford successful and been in every CPL final? That's, that's why. So yeah, understandably so uh, that you would bring him up, but let's, yeah, let's turn back. Okay. By the way, Forge is a Jack in a box. Crazy analogy. That was so good. Oh my. Well, that's just kind of what I'm thinking about. I'm like, you know, and you're spinning that thing and then, Boom. There's no other way to there's no other way to describe it. Yeah, that's that. Truly, like first round of the playoffs. Hello, it's time. <laughs> that he's like, oh my god, there's Forge. I knew they'd show up at some point. <laughs> there they are. Okay, okay, Calvary Forge this Saturday at Tim Hortons Field. Your opinion on this more generally, because they've met twice now this season here, both ending in a draw. What are the odds that this one kind of goes deep and maybe potentially a, a penalty shootout? What are your thoughts overall? Oh, that would be so fitting. Um, it would also, yeah. uh, I may fall asleep on the desk if that ends up being the case because we're going to be, and I'm very happy about this, but at the same time, keep the coffee coming. But um, on One Soccer, yeah. we also have the women's friendly in the afternoon. So we're, we're going to be doing Canada versus Brazil. I think I can stop at 2.30. Then we're going to, you know, so we're basically on the air from 2.30 until, to your point, whenever the Cavalry Forge. Game. Right. Okay. So you were like, penalties? No. Yeah. <laughs> Please, God, no. You get into broadcasting. <laughs> this ends the, no, I'm kidding. You want a great game and you want a great story. And this is something that we've also been debating in our One Soccer Studios. Both of them have great stories. 
I mean, even if Forge were to win again and you're like, oh, but they're just win. No, it's a great story still to have them be able to win and solidify this, you know, this dynasty conversation. And then Cavalry, of course, goes without saying they're a great story because they'll be able to solidify the double, which is winning the regular season and finally winning the cup. And, um, you know, also finally being able to beat Forge. So there's just mm-hmm. there's incredible stories on both ends here. And uh, I just I really want a good game. I want a game. I think everyone wants is like you want a game where the players decide it. You don't want a game where there's like a suspect call. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want it to all be fair. You want all players to be available. Like One of those where it's like, let's just go toe to toe. Because there's so much history between these two, whether it's regular season play, whether it's in the Canadian Championship, because we know they faced um, each other there. Well, like, there's just a lot of history between them. Totally. And, and it's organic. And I think that's what I love, is oftentimes, we didn't know where the rivalries were going to come from in the CPL. And it's just natural, based on a, you know, geography. We just assumed that the rivalry would be Forge and York United. You know, it's just the cute well, approximately a hundred percent. Yeah. So you're like, oh, well, of course that's going to be the rival. And of course, you know, Pacific and Cavalry. And at the time, you know, Edmonton was in there. You're like, you just, based on geography, you just figured those would be the rivals. So the fact that Cavalry and Ford just became this rivalry organically, ah, it's just, it's even better. It's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And to your point about the storylines too, like, I think there is a misconception that, you know, Fords win again. Oh, great. But there is something there. They didn't really find that flow for longer than a few weeks in the regular season. And then for them to put themselves in a position where they're hosting a final is crazy within itself. And of course, I'm biased as the Forge Audio Network, but you know what I mean. Like there, it could go either way. And I think there is something to be said for what both teams are bringing to the table here. So, yeah. Oh, no, for sure. And yeah. by the way, remember, Forge wins then they do get that spot in CONCACAF Champions Cup as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. they would get it even if they even if they lost because, because Cavalry already won it by being the regular season winners and whoever finished second gets that yes. berth. But, I mean, do you really want to get that berth because it was handed to you? Yeah, you know, yeah. Some sort of technicality? Hells no. You want it <laughs> because you won it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Like, you don't want to get it by default. And that's another thing that I wanted to ask you about, too. This is not the first time that they've earned a spot in CONCACAF. What do you think that that does for a team and having that experience playing at that level and then coming back into the CPL for another season? It's it's massive. I mean, the fact that, you know, when Cavalry clinched, we had uh, Marco Carducci on and we were talking to him and I had said to him, I'm like, you know, the schedule hadn't come out yet. I'm like, but there's a possibility you could face Messi, like in Miami. And he's like, I know, yes. I know, right? Like he's like, yeah, to his head. crazy, like, right? Yeah, like it's it's things like that. And I mean, there's there's so much. A, you want to be in every prestigious tournament you can be in. So it goes without saying that you just want to be there because, right? End of sentence, period. Be there. Uh, all the other stuff that comes with it, the extra games, that extra type of experience, the extra competition, the financial. Yeah, like logistically speaking, for sure. There's all of that that matters. But then yeah. I think, you know, it's a great torch that these teams are carrying for the CPL into, you know, the CONCACAF Champions Cup as well. Because it's like, you know, this is a big deal that we have a domestic league here. I mean, we know it's a big deal because the women are fighting for it. So we know mm-hmm. how much it matters to have a domestic league. So the CPL, you know, is is blazing that path as well for Canadian soccer. So to have two teams competing in the Champions Cup, like that's a massive deal in a bigger philosophical way. So there are just so many benefits uh, to being into, you know, always gaining access into those types of competitions. Well, thank you, Andy. This has been, your insight has been wonderful. I think this perfectly kind of lays out what the rest of the week is going to look for and gives us some good groundwork and context ahead of uh, what will be a very exciting next couple days leading up to the final here. Listen, it's going to be a blast. And and I will say the CPL, they do make it a championship weekend, right? Thursday, it's going to be the awards ceremony. I am so excited to be hosting that. I cannot wait. Uh, Friday, obviously, we start getting the interviews, match day minus one. That's when you really start to feel the energy. And then Saturday, it's game time, baby. Can't wait.
Okay, I'll see you at the award show, by yeah. the way. Yeah, I didn't realize that you were hosting it. Oh, I'm hosting. I'm be I'm getting all bedazzled up and everything, man. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. Did I buy a new blazer for the award show? Yes, you did. Sue me. Bonus points for you. Bonus points. All right. <laughs> um, I know you like to put people on the hot seat. Um, oh, no. Animation. Guess what? This one's my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Consider your seats burning hot, all right? Okay. I've got a couple questions for you um, to close it out. It was only right. It was okay. only fair. Okay, I'm ready. You get to choose an attacking three from players from Forge and Calvary. I made it an odd number for, <laughs> for a reason. See, I, I love... I love, I do love my forwards and I love my mids. See, to me, I'm already picturing, I have to, like, I, to me, Kyle Becker, it goes without saying. Uh, and I love to say maestro, right? So I just, I love Kyle Becker there and I'm probably doing like a Meyer Bevan and an Ali Moosey, to be honest. Okay. You know what? That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I appreciate your honesty. And that's the, actually the last question I had for you. Thanks so much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you stink. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Next one. You've got no choice, but you've got to sit in a room for an hour alone with a forge player. You get to pick their brain on how they play, why they play the way they do. No brainer for me. We all know I'm a goalie hugger. You know, I'm going to say Tristan Henry. Like I was so fair. I honestly did not know you were a goalie hugger. Yes. Just, yeah, that's it. Just all the time. Okay. No brainer. <laughs> this one I know is going to be hard for you. Okay. You get to choose one of the following snack options for every game. <laughs> the rest of your, of your broadcasting career. Every single other option is off the table for eternity. Okay. <laughs> Sour cherry blasters, figs, or let's go raspberries. Okay. Sour cherry blasters. Jordan put you up to this because that's all he eats. Honestly, I don't know how that guy still has his teeth. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, do you have a hundred cavities? That's all he eats. Um, so no. So we're, those are off the table. So those are off the table. I do love immediately. Them, but like, um, if, if we're talking about my snack and broadcasting, as much as I love them, they can get dirty, and I don't want to stain my clothes. So it goes without saying. If anyone listens to One Nation, we did rank our fruit. So my number one fruit, which is now going to be my number one snack, it's the fruit of the gods. I've said this before. Figs. Baby. <laughs> all the way you know what maybe i should have given the listeners some context for the f the fruit um rankings yeah everyone's like why is she why did she choose yeah figs and cherry blasters and like so this is a one nation <laughs> so right all right andy and that's officially that's officially it i'm gonna let you go <laughs> it was fun i had a blast i'm so glad i had a great time and it's really really nice to have a female voice on here so just know that i appreciated you coming as i said your insight and now uh i guess we see each other at the award show see you. this has been forge daily with Mackenzie barwell if you like what you heard please like follow subscribe comment and share